Eric Branstrom gets a one-year deal, Yorkie. Is that a, you got to prove this to me? Is that I'm going to bet on myself? Is that, yes, this might be tradable money here? I think it's good for all parties involved. I think for the Ottawa Senators, yeah, he's, he's getting $2 million, which is a nice little raise for him. Uh, it's short term, so the Senators aren't going to be locked in because I really believe this. I, I, you give Tyler Clevin, this is going to be a year where who knows who knows where he starts. Uh, if, if he starts in the minors, maybe he works his way up and plays into the, uh, into the Senators' uh, top six. But I, Clevin is eventually going to be here. He's eventually going to be here. When's that going to be? Who knows? Who knows how much time he's going to take to develop? Uh, You look at Jacob Bernard Docker. He's got a nice two-year deal as well. So for for Brandstrom, yeah, it's it's show me. It's a one-year deal. Uh, Let's see what you can do with it. The thing with Brandstrom, though, on on betting with himself, betting on himself, usually if you're going to get a huge uptick in salary, you got to put some points up. or, or be like a big, mean defenseman. So I think for, if you're the Senators, yeah, you gave him $2 million, but how much more can he go up from that in dollar amount? Because unless there's an injury, he's probably not going to get a lot of power play time. And the only way you can put up points as a defenseman in the NHL consistently is if you get PP time. So I, I, don't, I don't see Chickren coming off the power play. I don't see Shabbat coming off the power play. And uh, I don't Jake see Sanderson. I don't see Jake Sant. So there's three guys, and the Ottawa Senators run their power play units. Usually, the first unit is a D back there, and the second unit second unit sometimes right. there's two D. And and I think with the current makeup of the Senators defense core, they'll go with two D. Depending too, depending too on what they get in the Debrinka trade, if they get a power play guy back in return. And also, too, you have to take into account that Norris now slots back into the power play. Giroux's a power play. So there's only so many guys that can play the power play. So the point is, do I like the signing? Sure. It's, 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 to me, it's not a lot of risk. It's one year. It's kind of a – it kind of gives time to the rest of the defensemen yes. to, to mature into their roles. It gives Bernard Docker time. It gives Clevin time. And who knows what's going on with Lassie Thompson. It, it, it gives all the prospects time to get better. Because I'll tell you one thing. Uh, Branstrom's going to come back and he's going to have a little more swagger to his game right now. Because now he's had, he's had a little bit of success. And with success breeds confidence. He's going to have another good summer. And he's going to come back and be very confident. And he's gonna he's gonna take another step in his maturity. The only problem is it's just, I, and and I stand by this with with Brandstrom for the type of player he is, he needs to play a lot of minutes to be effective. It's really difficult to be a puck moving defenseman, a body position guy, a stick on puck guy, and be in the bottom pairing. You, when you're that kind of player that Brandstrom is. Yeah. It's about getting reps. It's about getting rhythm. And it, and it's about playing with a line that when you give them the puck, you can support the attack as the fourth man. You're involved in the offense. And I still believe the best fit for Branstrom is with somebody else playing in a top four role, probably yeah. as a number four, getting some second power play time. But who knows? It could be injuries. Something could happen uh, with Ottawa's blue liners. It's a good... It's a good signing because it gives you it gives you some insurance in case something happens. But... If you're, if people think he's going to be a good bottom pairing guy for the long term, they're sadly mistaken. This, this is a move to buy time for the rest of the rest of the blue line core until they mature into their roles. Uh, Gavin, if you can put the board back up, I will point out though, Yorkie. So one, a couple things. One, he, as you say, it's time to develop the other guys. And if you sit a Brandstrom for a game or two while Clevin or whatever plays. Sitting a two million dollar player, not that big a deal. Uh, they're a not going to sit. They're not going to sit him, Wally. He's not sitting. No, no, like, no. I'd... For a game or two, right? So if all of a sudden Tyler Clevin is playing lights out, and so is JBD, well, having him as the seventh D, not that big a deal. Yeah, not that big a deal. But I like I I, I think he starts the season as their as so their do I. Fl- no, as their that's five. Not what I'm saying. Okay, I yeah, talk, if, if, yeah. Okay, later gotcha. in the season when they start to develop, and you think Tyler Clevin is pushing him. Sitting him is not that big a deal. That's my point. The, the thing it's not with, like he's five million. 
The thing that Brandstrom does really well is he moves the puck. He moves the puck. His underlying numbers are very good. Uh, yep. He's a great passer. He sees the ice. And all those things that he does well, he's going to do even better this year. Because right. going through the process, I remember, like, the league now will kind of slow down for him because he's got a little bit of confidence. But here's the thing. When he was playing his best hockey, Shabbat was hurt. Chikrin was hurt. And the reason he was playing like that was because of opportunity. And that's the thing you need to understand with defensemen like a Brandstrom. You have to play in order for you to play that way. <laughs> it's just, I remember my, my last year in Boston, I went into a position and I was a puck moving guy, albeit I was an older guy. I started playing 12 minutes. It is so difficult to play between 10 to 12 minutes as a defenseman to be a guy that moves the puck, Chris passes, right. skates, and gets into the play because all of a sudden your team gets a penalty. There's two minutes you're not going on the ice. You go to the bench. You're sitting there. That two minutes could sometimes turn into five minutes. The heart rate goes up. It goes down. It's a lot more difficult than people think. And when you play the position of defense and you go out there for your next shift, that's when mistakes happen because you're not mentally, physically, and two, like your body just, you just, it's, it's very difficult. The point is I'm trying to make. So that's why there's certain guys that know how to play in that third defense pairing because they're guys, when they get the puck, they're not really, it's usually like you watch a Radko Gudis. It's up the boards. It's a long pass. It's cross checks some guys. It's hits some guys. Those are generally the guys that play in your, in your bottom pairing. Except, except if you look at Vegas, they got a little bit different makeup. Uh, all so anyway, my point was all 7D right now. If you include Tyler Clevin, all under the age of 27, with Artem Zoo being the oldest at 27. So, yeah, uh, just a young, uh, up and coming blue line, which and just I still think needs help. 